Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Booze and Reviews. I'm Knowledge, and today we're reviewing Conway the Machine and the Alchemist's Lulu. And I am sipping on a Harpoon IPA, 5.9% uh, IPA from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of weak for an IPA, uh, but it's got good flavor. It, it's got a, a little bit of spice and a little toasty flavor. It goes down pretty easy. So let's get to this review of Conway the Machine and the Alchemist. <laughs> So I, I love seeing one producer for one album. And this concept, it, it kind of goes in waves. In the 80s it was in. In fact, producers were actually part of the group back in the 80s. Then it waned a little bit in the late 90s, and it definitely went away in the 2000s. And now I wouldn't say it's necessarily coming back, but we've seen several examples of it lately. And every time it seems to work out. Uh, such as Mad Lib and Freddie Gibbs and their projects together, or the stellar project that we had earlier this year from Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats. I, I loved that one. Um, I got to give love to the producers, and Alchemist is having a nice little year from the song on the Jay Electronica album to the Boldy James album that he did to this. And his production is, is on point here. It really fits Conway's style and really fits the subject matter. Alchemist is getting very, very dark, um, like he's known to do at times, but definitely keeps it dark throughout this album. I have to be honest, I couldn't really get into the Griselda album. I kept trying because it got so much praise, but I just couldn't do it. So while I know they were making a lot of noise for a while, even before that album from last year, this is the first album or EP in this case that I've really got into. Why? fucking shoot sideways that song is a monster and that has to be the anthem of the year so far and uh it made me dig into conway a little bit and it made me want to digest the rest of this so more on that particular song later but that's why i decided to really get in and, and see what this ep was all about so the album title itself is a reference to a somewhat obscure early 2000s movie called paid in full Bonus points if you know that the movie title itself is a reference to a classic Eric B. and Rakim album. Speaking of producers being part of the group, uh, that's a classic album. So if you're young and you haven't heard that, check that out. Um, it's a good title for this album, uh, Lulu that is, because Lulu was the drug kingpin in the movie. And Conway's spitting mostly about the drug game and drug game related subject matter, busting guns and, and things like that throughout the whole album. Uh, he kicks it off, speaking of drug references, with 14 keys. Uh, it immediately starts off the theme of the album. He's got a nice line in here saying he gets dirty like Ben Wallace putting in work for the Pistons. That's one of my favorite NBA teams of all time, the, uh, the Ben Wallace, Rashid Wallace, Chauncey Billups, 2004 Pistons. So it's pretty cool that he references that here. Um, but... You know, the song itself, it, it doesn't go too far. It's, it's a good introduction to what's going to happen on the album. We get some, a nice dark beat from The Alchemist and, uh, and of course, uh, Conway setting off the drug references right from the beginning. The next song is The Contract, and he uses an obvious homage to Biggie right off the bat, saying he turned his negative to positive. I also noticed that throughout this EP that there's the laugh ad-libs, they kind of sound like the old bad boy laughs. And it makes sense that Conway would be heavily influenced by Biggie as the style of the album reminds us somewhat of Biggie's darker subject matter. Um, don't get me wrong, Conway isn't close to the kind of storyteller that Biggie was, but the drug game references are really what I'm talking about here. Um, the chorus on this song, the contract, is pretty weak. Um, it'll make you appreciate even more the next song, with the schoolboy Q assisted chorus on Shoot Sideways, uh, as that's the very next track. Uh, what else can I say about Shoot Sideways? Alchemist absolutely killed the beat, and they smartly started the song with the chorus, because that hook, it gets you hooked on this song, and, and really the EP as a whole, it sucks you in when you hear this. Maybe they should have kicked off the whole EP with this particular song. But uh, Schoolboy Q, he creates an earworm that it'll just have you hit and repeat the whole time. Conway's flow is above adequate here. His subject matter is mere bravado, but it still works, especially when that chorus comes back in. 
and you'll hear it again and again and want to hear it again and again and it'll go over and over in your head. You won't be able to get it out. Your brain will just be going boom, diggy, boom, boom, diggy, boom, bay. Uh, so the next song, Calvin, this is probably my second favorite track on the album. The beat is dark as hell. Conway handles his own chorus well this time. And he displays a different flow from what we've heard on previous tracks. He shows a little more verbal dexterity and makes it a little more interesting. Even though still the subject matter is still some of the same. But again, that goes in with the theme of the album and what he's trying to achieve there. But his flow is definitely a bit off kilter and, uh, and I like it on this track. The next track, They Got Sunny. This is another good track due to the feature on it. Uh, Conway's subject matter starts to get a little stale by this point, but Cormega livens it up. I like the way Cormega puts words together. I always have, and he does what he does best here. It's that old New York flow. Um, you got to like it. Check out Cormega's, tra uh, Cormega's verse on the track, They Got Sunny. Uh, Cormega still got it. And then the last track rounding out the EP is Gold BBS's. Uh, it's more of the same bravado, gun and drug talk, but even among that, Conway does spit some clever lines like the double entendre, uh, my money in line, that's why I'm good with the Connect Four, uh, if you get that one. So, you know, he's got some little jewels in there. It, it works, and uh, that's one thing that'll keep you uh, listening to this album, even though it, uh, it tends to be about the same thing and somewhat repetitive. I think I got to start listening to Griselda a little bit more because this one was interesting and it seems like they're starting to take over the game a little bit. They're very prolific uh, coming out with things. Um, uh, a lot of albums over the past year or two, a lot of material that is. Uh, I know West Side Gun also just recently dropped another full length. Uh, so I'm going to start listening to these guys a little bit more because this was enough to, to catch my ear and uh, enough to make me appreciate uh, why a lot of people like them and why there's a lot of hype around Griselda. Um, one thing about having one track so good, like on this album, is it tends to make you want to skip right to that track every time you put the album on. So it's really hard to absorb the other songs or feel their worth. That being said, this is not a one-hit wonder kind of album. It works as a whole due to Alchemist production and theme. Um, and as somewhat shallow as the theme is, uh, the subject matter, it does tie the album together. So Conway does pull that off as an LP. I probably wouldn't have been able to take the whole thing. Uh, and I would have just listened to Shoot Sideways over and over. But as an EP, it works and I like it. Um, I'll definitely be checking for more Conway and Griselda in the future because this is a good album overall. It's compact enough um, that, again, the subject matter does not get too tiresome. So I give this one a 7 out of the 12-pack, and uh, I'm going to keep drinking six more of these and uh, go listen to Conway the Machine and The Alchemist's Lulu and enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> 